Okay, lesson 17. Question of the day, what skills and practices are important when creating an interactive program? So let's take a look at this lesson 17 project, the interactive card. Be sure to read the rubric. Okay, so here is the example project. Run the program a few times and answer the following questions. Which elements appear to use drawing commands? Which elements appear to be sprites? For each sprite, which properties are being updated? Where do you see conditionals being used? Are there elements that you don't understand? So let's think about this. Which elements appear to use drawing commands? Well, happy birthday, that's text. That is a drawing command. Down here we have more text, that's a drawing command. Um, I'm pretty sure these lines uh, are, are just lines that those are drawing commands. The ellipses are drawing commands. And I think that's it. Which elements appear to be sprites? Well, this gift is definitely a sprite. So when you shake it a bunch of times, these two things pop up, the bicycle and the dog. Those are sprites. And I think those are the only sprites. Uh, for each sprite, which properties are being updated? Um, okay, so... The property for this gift is dot rotation. Oh, you know what? I think they're all dot rotation. Yeah, so the bicycle is being rotated with the counter pattern. But, oh no, this is just the X and Y, random X and Y. So this is the X and Y properties. Okay. Um, and the bicycle and the gift were dot rotation. Uh, where do you see conditionals being used? Okay, so I think there's one conditional. If, it's like, if the box is, oh no, I think there's two conditionals. No, there's one. If the box is shaken, let's say, 50 times, then this happens. Then you're going to hide the box and you're going to show these two sprites. Uh, are there elements that you don't understand? I think we explained everything. Okay, I am not going to do this project for you. So I'm going to show you these examples, but I'm not going to do it for you because that's not how you learn. So let's take a look at these examples. Okay, so the whole idea behind them giving you these examples is for you to have code that you can work with, that you can copy and paste and make it your own. You can't just copy it and say, this is my project. But you can copy copy things and turn them into something else and then claim it as your project. So thanks a bunch. Pick all the flowers by clicking on them. Look at that. So you click it three times and it turns into a vase. So look, we have flower one, flower two, flower three. And then we have the vase. Those are the, the four variables that are created. Oh, and then we have this flower count equals zero. And look, this is a new, this is a new um, property that we have not learned. Vase.visible equals false. Okay, vase.visible, I should say. It's false because it's not showing up at first. Now look, flower count equals zero. What they did in here is they said if mouse pressed over flower one, flower two on line 31, and flower three on line 37, each of these if statements or these conditionals makes flower count go up by one when, you're, when you click the flower. So boom, flower count goes up by one. Boom, flower count goes up by one. So now it's at two. Boom, flower count goes up by uh, one again. So it's at three, okay? And what they did is they made another conditional. If flower count is greater than or equal to three, flower dot one visible, it, it makes the flowers visible and the vase visible right here. Um, so that's, that's what happens here. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that clicks in your head what that, what that, um, what that did. Okay. Okay, and I, I forgot to mention, if you want to take code from here, they don't let you, look, it's in view only. But if you click show text, I'm pretty sure you can take some of it. 
Yeah. Okay. You can copy and paste it if you click view text, but you got to be very careful. Okay. And yeah, you can borrow ideas from this. Like I remember somebody doing, uh, they just changed this so that it's three balls, uh, soccer balls, and there's a goal over here and you click each soccer ball and it appears in the net and it says goal up top for each soccer ball and it changes the scoreboard up here. So take these ideas, make them your own, do not just copy them, and let's move on to the next example. I'm noticing that the levels up here disappeared, so maybe you just gotta click the back button. Okay, so yeah, I did have to click the back button and it took me here, so let's take out this happy birthday card. So we already saw this example, um, so let's look at how it works. It's very similar to what we just looked over, they have this variable called shake count. So every time you do this and it moves, when you shake the gift, look, it's using dot visible again. There are some invisible things, okay? But when shake count, let's see. Okay, so if mouse did move, that's when my mouse is moving, it's shaking the gift. Uh, present dot rotation, that's what shakes it. We have this shake count variable and shake count equals shake count plus one. So here, line 30, we have if shake count is greater than 100, that's what makes this gift invisible. Present dot visible equals false. That's what makes it invisible. And then surprise one dot visible is true. That's the bike and the dog. Okay. Oh, and there's a sound to this too. Well, I'm not hearing a sound, but uh, anyway, um, so that's, it's very similar to the last one. Let's talk about the text though. So look, you have here, does it happy birthday? Yeah, happy birthday. You have your text down here. Uh, move the mouse to shake your present. Keep shaking to see your surprise. So keep that in mind. And that is under draw sprites. Okay. Um, so that's that example. Okay, so let's look at the uh, third and final example. Okay, here is the final example. Hi, welcome to my awesome life. Press space to play my guitar. I don't know. What, uh, there we go. There's the sound. Press space to play my guitar and the arrows to ride my bike. Okay, so let's take a look. So we have outside that's... I would okay that's the mountains in the background then we have the bike sprite then we have the alien sprite got the guitar that he's holding and we got the okay the music notes so these are sprites that's a pretty complicated movement i would say so note one and note two um okay so when key down space they set the x and y position of note one and note two and then they have these sounds I would encourage you guys to uh, play with the sounds. And then when key down, th so here's the movement for the bike. Oh, whoops. The movement for the bike is right there. Uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Bike moves to the left, bike moves to the right. It's just a counter pattern. Bike.x equals bike.x minus 5. And down here we have plus 5. Uh, move and wiggle the notes. Okay, so this is the complex movement. Everything else you guys are capable of. But here, it's a little more complicated. See how they're wiggling? That's just random number and rotation. But the upward movement can bind with that. Okay, so it's a counter pattern. So it's, I guess it's not, it's actually not that complicated, but putting it all together is a little complicated. So it's just a counter pattern with the X and Y position. Okay, guys. So if you want to do something like that, feel free. Remember, if you want to borrow these ideas, you click show text and copy and paste. So you're like, oh, I want something to wiggle like that. Copy and paste this code. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at what's for the rest of the level. Okay, so the rest of this project, you're just following the directions like we've done on the mini projects before this. So here, all you're doing is creating a background. Okay, guys, I'm not going to do this project for you. Uh, let's go to show blocks. Um, but you're going to need this background block, okay, and put it at the top of your draw loop. 
Okay, so let's look at what is exercise five. Okay, so here we're on exercise five. Here's where you add your sprites. So the main thing that I want you guys to remember here is that to create a sprite, you need this block and the set animation block, and they need to go above your draw loop at the top of your code, okay? How you set the animation is you go into the animation tab, click new animation, and choose something here. Okay, so let's say we want this little bear, this cute little bear. Okay, I'm going to just name it bear. Keep the name simple. Keep the name simple. And then I like to name my variables the same thing as my animations. So I'm going to set this to bear, bear, bear. And remember, you need draw sprites in your draw loop. So this should show the bear in the, yeah, in the center. Okay, so that's for this exercise, exercise five. Okay, so user input. Um, so we're going to want to add, um, you know, like if left arrow is pressed and things like that. I went ahead and added a background block just because that's what level four asked to do. So user input, you're going to need these if statements, okay? And again, I'm not doing this project for you. I just want to show you an example. So bear, let's say uh, if, oh, uh, whoops, no. So if key down, we'll just say left, or no, we'll just say up. Okay, so key down up. And we want to make the, the bear move up. So you're going to need a counter pattern, guys. And I think uh, minus is what makes something move up and down on the y-axis. So we'll get the minus sign. And then we get the sprite dot y again. So if up bear dot y equals bear dot y minus five that's the counter pattern okay the counter pattern so i press up it moves up okay that's user input make sure you are looking at the rubric because if you do one form of user input i don't think that gets you an a on the rubric so remember that okay so here exercise seven they're talking about other conditionals the surprise in your card and what they're referring to is this is like the most complicated part of the project. They're referring to like when this gift was shook and the other things popped up when these flowers were clicked and then they turned into flowers in the vase. OK, when the space bar is pressed and the notes shoot up. So what you're going to need is the property. Dot visible to uh, to to do this. OK, and. Like I said, guys, just borrow. You can you if you must just borrow code from these these uh, interactive cards. OK, as long as you're displaying, you understand these concepts. I'm OK with that. So let's move on to exercise eight. OK, so all exercise eight is saying is to put the finishing touches on there. So you're going to want to put text on there. So um, I would I really want to see a text that just tells the user how to use the card. Uh, so let's see. So for me, I have this uh, key down up, press up. I'm going to say press up to make the bear move up. And then we should see that in the top left of the screen. Yeah, press up. So that's what I want to see from you on exercise eight. OK, subtle animation in the background, sound effects. I would love for you to figure out how to do that. Um, but that's what exercise eight is, and that's pretty much it for this project. So just email me if you have questions. Um, yeah, let, let me know.